He was very affable, very likable. He was a real leader, a born leader. He could, uh, even by looking at you, let you do, do things uh, which uh, you will appreciate yourself. And of course, he was so full of, of uh, enthusiasm for independence that when you listen to him, you were always so infatuated by what he had to say. So I, I always felt very hap happy in his company. Sir, uh, let's mm. come to February 24th, 1966. The armed forces of Ghana decided to topple the regime. Um, you were here. Um, you were a member of government. Um, what, was, what was it like? It was a very unpleasant uh, affair. In fact, um, there was so, so much rumor about uh, an impending coup uh, that uh, it wasn't uh, a big surprise that it came. Uh, but um, you could see that it was really uh, uh, engineered and forced by outside powers, especially the uh, the Western powers, led by America for that matter. Uh, why, why was that? Well, it was part of the Cold War uh, business, and that was, uh, 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 it was felt by Western powers that uh, Kwabi was getting too near the Eastern countries for that matter. All right, mm -hmm. now you've said that. Um, Ghana was a socialist country then. Yes. Um, why socialism um, as against the other ideologies? Why did you go along that path when you had the opportunity um, uh, from 1957? Well, we are always thinking in terms of the masses, the condition of the ordinary man, the, the people, the workers, the farmers, and therefore the mass movement was was one of the principal aspects of the whole scheme which uh, uh, Kwame, Kwame evolved for the, uh, for the struggle. So we were, we were always for the masses, always for the people. And uh, the masses responded in the form of the widespread agitation, which really made the British government feel that, in fact, Ghana could get uh, independence. Yes. So when uh, you went along the socialist path, do, can you say that in 1966 a lot of Ghanaians were disaffected and that your um, experiment had failed somehow? I wouldn't say the experiment had failed, but since I'd got, I'd, uh, got uh, to a rather sticky point, in the first place, uh, whether it was a natural, uh, global uh, uh, affair or whether it was intentionally engineered, the, the uh, price of cocoa had fallen so drastically uh, from about 3,000 pounds a ton to only about 900. Yeah. And that was the mainstay. In fact, Ghana at that time was getting about 70% of a foreign exchange from cocoa alone. You see, and things were made rather difficult uh, but I wouldn't say that uh, uh, that had um, not brought about the disaffection of the people. It was because the, the people who, uh, uh, who took uh, the uh, uh, sledges against the government were being uh, uh, manipulated and controlled by outside forces. Now, um, you explained that. What I, want, what, what I was told by someone who knew Kwame Nkrumah very well was that um, he had a knack um, for choosing the right people for the right jobs. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, compatriots or colleagues in the struggle of, uh, for independence and the subsequent uh, post-independence years, like um, the Honorable Kamala Gwedema, Prabhu Duse, um, 
pattern, uh, some of whom are, are gone, some are alive. I, I'm just mentioning. Yes, them. yes, yes, yes. Um, Yaman, those who are free, all those people. Um, what made what made you work so well? I mean, you know, tell me about it. First of all, I think it was uh, mainly due to the unflinching loyalty to the leadership of Graham and Cromer. And also the uh, fact that the people felt uh, uh, they were all in tune with the struggle for independence. Yeah. Therefore, they strove uh, every nerve yeah. to attain that goal. Yeah. And then also, uh, it was a joy working with Kwame Nkrumah. It was a joy seeing that what you were striving for was uh, being attained, was being achieved. So, uh, in fact, people really worked with uh, uh, with a will and uh, with with real conscience. Thank you.